Hey guys, Seth here with Throttle Addiction. Today we are going to be uh, repairing our friend Cindy's uh, soft tail. She went in the rhubarb a little bit. Uh, we got a bent springer, front end, bars are, are uh, wiggly wobbly, bent wheel, all sorts of bad things. So we're gonna get it up on the lift, take it apart, see what we can find, see what we need to fix. Side note, I guess that this whole process, uh, stripping down, going back together with a springer, um, if you're doing it on a soft tail, if you're just taking a, a big twin, making a chopper out of it, if you bought our Sportster hardtail kit, you, you want to run a springer front end on that. Pretty similar process as far as how to strip it down, how to get that the new springer installed, whether it's this guy or um, one of the mid-USA ones we sell on the website. This spring leg here is our biggest culprit. It uh, looks pretty factory, but definitely not supposed to be that way. That's supposed to be straight. Got a new wheel. Uh, we can tell right away that thing's uh, got a little bend to it. This is my favorite, my favorite part right there. <laughs> We're gonna start by taking the wheel off, getting all that kind of separated, pulled away. The uh, ditch also took our fender off for us, so we didn't have to do that. Uh, normally that would be something else we'd be taking off. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull, uh, pull the caliper off. We'll just kind of let that hang. I'm gonna pull this brake stay. Uh, this bracket kind of get all that separated uh, from the springer again need to see what we can reuse and what is going to need Need replace there. So we kind of got to get it all off uh, go through check it all out Pull the cotter pins out All right so the two brake caliper stays, one there, one there. All right, piece one removed. Little P-clamp in here holding our brake hose. Gonna pop that off so we can get the brake kind of set aside here. Pop that off. Now, we can get this kind of over here and out of the way. Got that loose. Now we're gonna pull our axle out, and get our wheel off here. All right, there she is in all her glory. So once we get uh, the Springer put on, we'll be changing all this over to our new wheel. Uh, assuming all that is good and reusable, but we'll check that out as we go. Okay, that's pretty much all down there. Now we're gonna start attacking our, uh, our bars and risers, getting all that stuff uh, pulled off our triple tree so we can get that springer out of there. So again, these bars were, uh, they were let's see if we can, a little, little rotation there. So we got, got something going on. Uh, presumably these are stripped out for the price of them. Uh, we'll, we'll just replace those. Uh, that peace of mind is well worth the, uh, the couple, the hundred dollars they're gonna cost, so. We're gonna pull this headlight mount off here. There's a bolt here, one on the other side. Uh, get that out of the way to kind of free up some of our, our wires and hoses there to, to help get our bars uh, up and out of the way there. If you're using a, another aftermarket Springer, the mid USA one, a DNA, whatever it is, um, this is one part that that's pretty difficult getting to to match up to. To it is your OEM windshield, some of that stuff. If you're wanting to use reuse that, okay, got the two bolts there. We got one more uh, coming right down here for for that. So we're going to sneak in there, maybe. Maybe, there you go. All right, got our little headlight mount off there. So now this, uh, this whole guy uh, is loose. We can slide that up out of there. That'll allow our wires and some of that stuff to, to get a little more, little more room there. 
in theory. Things are a little bent, a little twisted, not exactly the way they, they were from the factory. We're gonna plop those back there and get our risers off here. One of them came all the way out. The other one just pulled the top nut off. So we'll slide that riser off there. Uh, definitely be replacing those, those riser bushings. You should be able to pull that guy off there. So we're gonna take our other riser stud out now. Oofta! as they say in Wisconsin. We're gonna take our top springer, um, top clamp off, bloop. Might not have been factory torque. Now I'm going to employ another person to help me hold the springer up so it doesn't just go kerplunk when we undo all this. Now there's a pinch bolt right there running horizontally through the top clamp. We're going to loosen that guy up, which will allow our top clamp to pop right off. Came prepared and it was one of the two. So our top clamps off. Last step before the forks slide on out is our uh, bearing nut here, the king nut. So we're going to take that off, which will loosen everything and she'll slide right out. So we'll get a big old socket and make it happen. Yeti. Pop that off of there. I'll keep this with me. This with me. The rest belongs to you. Oh, that's even the brake hose. That's the worst news I've ever heard. Who would run that through there? There you go. You can just kind of set her down however it wants to go. Can't break it at this point. All right, there she is. We've ran our brake line through the springer, which is unfortunate because now we got to break brake lines and bleed all those. But so we'll get that pulled off. So we got our springer. Uh, Pulled off up on the bench here, got that brake line taken apart, snaked out of there. Uh, you can pretty clearly see our, our damage here. This bottom leg's nice and straight, gap between, flipper to the other side, and it's uh, not so, so moss. So we're going to pop this other one out. So they do come with axle and spacer, especially after crash, not a bad idea changing that. Uh, dust cups, bearings, and races. We will for surely be replacing those. Uh, looks like a bolt-on steering lock. A little different, but... Comes with a brake stay, as well as the brake caliper, which is pretty good in our case. Uh, that was one thing we were going to see if it needed replaced due to being bent or twisted. Uh, don't even need to worry about that now. And there it is. It's a pretty good looking Springer. Um, looks pretty similar to the vintage Mid-USA one. Uh, we were initially gonna go with, with that option on this soft tail replacement. Uh, decided to go with the OEM soft tail replacement. Uh, we'll put the link to this in the website. Come in black, come in chrome. Reason we went with this one, um, if you're replacing one on an OE Springer soft tail, uh, you like that look, you're gonna be keeping your windshield, your uh, front fender, you can reuse all your same caliper, all that fun stuff. So if you go with an aftermarket, you know, one of the mid USA, the vintage style, uh, different manufacturers, um, you're gonna have to replace your caliper your brake stay, your caliper bracket. If you want a fender on it, you're gonna have to buy the fender fender mounts. If you want the shock on it, you're buying that shock mount. Uh, your top clamp's not gonna work anymore. 
Your Springer risers are going to be, or excuse me, your risers are going to be different because uh, the soft tails have a different bushing riser. This does come with the risers, which is, is pretty good if you're a, have a crashed one like ours, uh, I'm always a little nervous uh, rerunning those with, with the possibility of those bolts getting stripped out there. So we don't have to worry about that. We got brand new shiny ones. We know we're good to go. Uh, B, if you're swapping over from a, a Heritage, or excuse me, a Hydroglide to a Springer, you got pretty much everything right there. Um, it does have uh, your brake stay tab. It's got your two fender mount um, your fender mount holes so we'll rob these studs or you might have to get the studs but it does have the tap holes in there which a lot of your aftermarket springers will will not have uh, one of the biggest things these have are your um, tap holes here uh, for your windshield clip on windshield mount um, if you're you're running an aftermarket springer um, not one of these OE style that that is not there and your windshield mount is not going to work for you. So all in all, it's got pretty much everything we need. Uh, a couple things we were thinking we might have to replace anyways came with it. So uh, saves us some time and money looking parts up and getting all that stuff there. We're back here with our Springer soft tail. We got all our parts, got our pieces uh, ordered up, got everything in. So we're going to start attacking the reassembly. First thing we're going to do is get our bearing put on our Springer here. We're gonna get our races put in the neck and get the Springer assembled so we can start putting everything on it. So we've got these bad boys greased up here. We do have a fancy bearing installer tool. Probably not a terrible idea to purchase. It makes life much easier, mainly for getting the old one off as well as making sure the new one goes on properly. You can use a piece of pipe, a piece of PVC, something of that nature, but uh, again, makes it much easier for getting the old one off. That's that. Make sure you put your dust seal on before you put your bearing on, otherwise you're taking it back off to put your dust seal on. Now we're gonna step over to the neck and we're gonna put those bearing or er, races in after I get them out of the freezer. So we got our bearing races in the freezer. Cold makes metal uh, retract. So as they retract, they get smaller, so they're easier to push in. As you can see, there's uh, our races there, a bunch of wheel bearings for other uh, applications in the freezer, as well as some Greek yogurt bars. So I'll grab the first one of those. So we got our top bearing race here. We are going to use our little bearing race installation tool here. Again, you can pound these in. You can do all sorts of things to get them in there, but uh, using the appropriate tool helps to get them in nice and true. Uh, doesn't mar them all up. So if you're doing a couple of these, not a bad idea to get the appropriate tool. Got her in there, and we'll just snug her on up. Pulling it down, again, using it, uh, doing it this way, keeps it in there nice and straight. Doesn't get racked and all cockeye. And she's home. Pop that off and do the same thing for the bottom one. Same thing on the bottom. You will know when they're in. If you're pounding them in, they'll change sound. And in this, they go smooth, 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 and then they just hard stop. Now we're ready to put our springer in, top bearing on, and our nut. So I'm gonna go grab some assistance. Oh, you even have a throttle addiction shirt on? Yes, you are on it. All my things are on the right side of where they need to go here. Easy on the powder coat. Ta -da. Ta -da. Greased bearing down in there. Give me a little, uh, little forward backwards wiggle. 
Hold, please. Tell me if you're dying. I am dying. Are slowly. you really? For reals or for kids? For kids. Oh. I'll just go ahead and hammer down on it while you're holding it. Bearings in. Dust cover is on. And, aw, oh, killing me, Smalls. All right, there you go, you can take a break. Is that it? That's it, you're done. You're done being famous. You, you did a great job. There you go, throttleaddiction.com, right there. Nice advertisement. <laughs> We're gonna tighten this guy, uh, tighten this guy down, and then Give her some some back and forth. Make sure we're we're happy with it. This is where your nice service manual, whether it be Harley Davidson or uh, aftermarket one, comes in pretty handy. Torque specs, all that. Start by giving her a little snug up here. Big socket, little ratchet. Torque that guy. That's all set. We're gonna put our top clamp on. Loosen up our pinch bolt. Then we're just gonna slide this guy down on there. Put our nut on, torque that. So here we go. Make sure all our wires in our right locations here. That's half the battle. All right. Get that guy started. Get our riser studs started. Make sure everything lines up. So now we're gonna torque all these 45 to 50, 20 to 25, and our pinch bolt 20 to 25. So there is an order to torquing all these Tightening everything down. Usually people start with your center there, but the riser studs are the first things we want to snug up. Uno. Torqued, torqued. Now we're gonna torque that guy, then that guy. 25 foot-pounds. Took a little break there, came back, got, uh, got our top clamp all torqued on. Our windshield bracket was a little bent, a little twisted. Um, got that kind of straightened out best we could, got that, that put back in there. Um, it is a little easier if you do all that uh, prior to putting your riser studs on. Soft tail risers are a bit of a strange guy. They have these built-in uh, rubber isolators in them. Uh, if you're using your old ones, you're probably going to want to get new uh, isolator rubbers. You can get these on our website, throttleaddiction.com. Um, but since that Springer came with these brand new shiny new ones, we're all set to go. Put in our little lock nuts. So now we're going to torque those to 25 to 35 foot pound. Um, one thing to note, kind of a, a pain in the butt about these, is you want to make sure they're they're lined up uh, to accept your bars when you get them get them torqued down. Otherwise, it's pretty difficult to get your bar, bars put on there. So we're going to get them close while we snug them up here. So line them up using our bars, get them close. Torqued. Like to make sure all our wires are coming out on the front side. This blinker wire snuck to the back side of our riser. We kind of want everything to be on this side here, running right up in between our, our light bracket there. All right, so now we're gonna grab the hardware. For our top clamp and get that guy tightened down 
We're going to our uh, Springer came with these riser caps. Obviously, we're not going to be using those because we got the integrated one with the speedometer. Uh, also came with this nice little spring. A lot of guys uh, don't know what that does. Get rid of it. This is a grounding spring because um, your risers are rubber isolated uh, so that your um, handlebars don't have any way of getting ground for some of the functions. So this just puts ground through your handlebars down through the risers. Pretty simple. Slap that right in there. That's all it does. And then we are going to put our top clamp on there. And push down a little spring there. It's trying to push back up. You're going to want to make sure your bars are uh, centered in your clamp. These ones are pretty easy because they step up from inch to inch and a quarter pretty uh, evident to tell there. We're just going to kind of tighten these down, um, crisscross back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it here, but the big thing as we're tightening that is, let me get a pointer. As we're tightening down, we want to make sure this gap in the back is even with our gap in the front. In the front. If you get too crazy on one bolt, you can pinch that all the way down and then you got a big gap in the front and that's not putting even pressure on the bars. So as you're tightening down, you want to kind of bounce back and forth to make sure that gap is staying uh, even until you get it close. And then we're going to make sure we like where our bars are and then get it to final torque. Final torque for these guys for this specific model. Um, 12 to 15 foot pounds. Again, going back and forth to keep that gap the same. Uh, windshield mount, all there really are is a bolt here, same on the other side. And then we have our headlight mount, headlight goes right there, uh, goes down right through there. Hold your headlight, also helps hold that windshield mount. Uh, our windshield mount did get a little twisted in uh, the crash, so we'll see how easy it is to uh, reattach to a not so bent springer. I'm gonna use a little red Loctite on these since they might wiggle and don't really need to go anywhere. Yeah, it's just as much fun as I was anticipating. TNCtool.com. Oh yeah, I think we finally got her started there, guys. We're gonna leave that one a little bit loose while we attempt to get these guys in. So we're gonna try to line her up with our eyeballs there. A little more line up. There we go. Same as on the other side, snug them up. And uh, that's, that's that part of the game. So now we're gonna get our tire up here in place um, a lot of spacers we have our our um, speedometer drive which essentially is your spacer for the left hand side our brake stay there's a couple pieces here when you take it apart you'll see all this but this is your your spacer it's got a little spring collar a brass bushing that's going to go slip inside of our brake stay that's going to be our um, wheel spacer for the right hand side as well as the pivot for our brake stay. So we got all that assembled. We're going to set that here, get our wheel up in here. Speedometer drive again, which is essentially our wheel spacer. Now bouncing to the other side is our Brake stay, all those goodies. There is one more piece that slides in there, but it's a tough, little tough. So I'm gonna take the axle from this side and we are going to start pushing her through. All right, we got it through, but now there's one more brass bushing that goes between our brake stay and our rocker. So I'm gonna back that guy out a little bit Squeeze that down in there. See how good I am aligning this without looking. Not 
very good is the answer. Don't mind my head. Aha! Victory! So now we got our brake stay here. We're just gonna rotate that guy back up around. This stud here is for our brake stay retainer. I'm gonna loosen this up, get that on there. We're gonna snug that guy up. These here are for our fender, as well as this guy here. Uh, fender is not here, it's with the owner from when they went in the rhubarb. So we're just gonna get that stuff kind of mocked up and let them handle it from there. The axle that comes with the Springer is a little more attractive than the OEM one, which is kind of nice. Refer to your owner's manual for proper torque. The last thing we have is to put our brake caliper back on our brake stay. Just kind of get it over the caliper there, or over the rotor rather. And then we're gonna slide her into location. Got your top hole here, which is your bolt. Your bottom one right there. Bottom one has to go through the brake stay and then into the brake pad. Got that one started. All right. That wraps up our Springer installation. These Springers here, the soft tail ones, available at throttleaddiction.com, black option, chrome option. The wheels, something we sell, uh, got that, that from the website. Uh, if you need soft tail bushings, all sorts of that fun stuff, uh, we, we offer as well uh, as the Springer. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe. Click the links, throttleaddiction.com.